The tale kicks off by introducing Michel Talini, a well-known private detective in London famous for cracking tough cases. At present, he's on a quest to expose a businessman's extramarital affair. Utilizing his skills, he tracks the businessman to a bar where he's with another woman. Silently, Mel takes a snapshot with his phone, but the businessman catches on, not approving of Mel's actions and even threatening legal action. Nonetheless, Mel stays composed in the face of this threat and hands over files revealing he's aware of all the businessman's misdeeds. Left with no power, the businessman realizes his career would be destroyed if his infidelity was revealed. Upon completing his task, he notices a tipsy woman named Cassie Holt with three gang members. Worried for her safety, he tails her as she leaves the bar. To his surprise, Cassie, who was on the verge of being harassed by the three men, manages to incapacitate one of them with her martial arts skills. Unfortunately, when the other two gang members attempt to corner her, Mel, initially hesitant to intervene, decides to aid her by confronting the gangsters. After the incident, Mel and Cassie grow closer, often hanging out together. Mel even helps Cassie overcome her alcohol addiction and offers her a position as his assistant detective. He then trains her in martial arts and shooting for their missions against criminals. Five years later, Mel heads to Dublin to meet police officer Rory McMahon, seeking assistance with a murder case involving JN, a business conglomerate. According to Rory, the murder case could have been easily solved by the police, but some conglomerates attempted to obstruct the investigation by bribing certain officers to halt the case. Following their conversation, Mel walks back to his hotel when he's suddenly ambushed and fatally stabbed by Jamie Douglas. Upon realizing Mel is dead, Jamie takes his phone and identification before fleeing the scene. Meanwhile, at Cassie's home, she wakes up from a nightmare and receives a distressing phone call informing her of Mel's murder. Stunned by the news, she is asked to meet Rory. Mel's death leaves Cassie feeling deeply saddened and adrift. Mel had played a crucial role in her life, supporting her through alcohol addiction, offering her employment, and providing a gun for self-defense. Afterward, Cassie goes to the police station to see Rory and ask about Mel's death. Discovering that Mel was looking into John's death before he was killed, Cassie volunteers to carry on his investigation. Before Rory can answer, Victor Harrison, John's attorney, steps in, insisting the investigation be stopped. Rory declines Victor's demand, suspecting bribery and the involvement of a cult in John's murder. Irritated by Rory's reply, Victor decides to exit the room. Meanwhile, Rory accepts Cassie's proposal to take on the inquiry into John's murder. Outside, Victor encounters his co-worker Wallace, whom he suspected of killing Mel, although she wasn't actually implicated. He requests Wallace to collect details about Mel's death and about Cassie, warning to disclose her offenses if she declines. With hesitation, she agrees. At the same time, as Rory spots the handgun Cassie got from Mel, he tells her that the gun was once owned by Mel's deceased wife, showing how much Mel relied on Cassie as one of his closest confidants. Subsequently, Rory hands over investigation papers on John's death to Cassie, enabling her to begin delving into the case. When Cassie got back home tired from the police station, she drifted off to sleep and experienced another frightening dream, even going as far as placing a knife next to her bed due to her fear of potential harm. Several days later, Wallace rendezvous with Victor at a stadium, providing him with documents detailing Cassie's private life. These documents unveil that she was previously subjected to abuse by her step-grandfather, which led to struggles with alcoholism and recurring nightmares. As per Wallace's findings, Cassie also acquired skills in jiu-jitsu and once stood up to her step-grandfather, reporting his abuse to the authorities. Despite Victor learning about Cassie's martial arts proficiency and her past challenges, he still underestimates her and believes that dealing with Cassie will be straightforward. In the meantime, Rory, who has been investigating Mel's death, informs Cassie that a skilled assassin murdered Mel by targeting a critical area of his body, the carotid artery. Rory suspects the assailant also took Mel's phone and identification. After hearing Rory's discoveries, Cassie proposes they search Mel's hotel room. Sadly, they discover no evidence in the hotel room, causing Cassie to speculate that the culprit has removed all traces of evidence. Without their knowledge, as Cassie and Rory exit the room, Jamie, the culprit, observes them from another building near Mickey's hotel, attempting to gather more clues. Cassie and Rory head to John's house but encounter resistance from John's security guards, 
leading them to fight their way past the front guards after incapacitating them. Rory hastily advises Cassie to depart upon realizing there are more guards inside than anticipated. Cautious, Cassie and Rory then dine at a restaurant while strategizing how to enter John's house. During their conversation, Cassie suddenly expresses longing for Michael's presence, believing he could have easily cracked the case, given his 26-year tenure as an Interpol agent. Unfortunately, after his wife's passing, Mel chose to retire and establish a private detective agency renowned for solving diverse cases. The following day, Cassie attempts to sneak into John's house with Rory providing guidance from a distance. After deceiving the guards and entering through the rear, Cassie thoroughly searches the house, including John's room where the body was discovered. Oddly, Cassie uncovers no clues, as if someone purposefully eliminated all evidence. Continuing her exploration, she stumbles upon a concealed chamber equipped with chains and cages for holding someone captive. As Cassie captures images of the secret room and prepares to send them to Rory, Jamie suddenly points a long-barreled weapon at Cassie, demanding that she deactivate her communication device. Jamie reveals that she was confined and subjected to torture by John and his cohorts in that room. When she finally managed to break free, her first action was to kill John, who had enslaved her for years. Jamie also admits to killing Mikkel because she believed he was associated with John's family and was trying to apprehend her. Shortly after, the wail of police sirens approaching John's house prompts Jamie to make a hasty exit, but she encourages Cassie to join forces in eliminating all the wicked individuals like John, particularly because Jamie knows Cassie has endured past abuse. Following Cassie's rendezvous with Rory, she divulges her discoveries and proposes they continue their investigation. However, their strategy is once again thwarted by Victor, who shows up at John's house, expressing his frustration because the police entered his client's residence without consent. As Rory tries to defend their actions and engage in a debate with Victor, Cassie deliberately brings up Jamie's name, causing Victor to fall silent and opt to leave, as though he's concealing something regarding Jamie. After leaving John's house, Cassie recalls Mikkel and her own past, when her family abandoned her after she took action against her abusive step-grandfather. This makes Cassie feel like she shares a similar fate with Mikkel, but she considers herself fortunate to have met Michael, who consistently supported her in confronting her childhood trauma. Suddenly, she receives a call from Mel's phone, still with Jamie. Jamie then shares her life story of being abused by her stepfather, which led her to escape from New York to London. However, Jamie became homeless after running out of money until she encountered an elderly woman named Di Evans, who offered her money and food containing sedatives. Upon awakening from her unconsciousness, Jamie found herself imprisoned in John's house, where she endured enslavement by the cult killer group, controlled by conglomerates in Dublin, for five years. With the multitude of abuses and tortures she endured, Jamie is determined to seek revenge on everyone associated with the cult killer, including Victor, who collaborated with the sect. Before hanging up, Jamie informs Cassie that she successfully killed one of the cult killer members. On the other hand, Victor and Wallace meet with Di and her husband, Edgar Evans, to discuss Jim's increasingly worrying whereabouts. While Victor continues to eliminate members of the cult killer group, he also informs them about Cassie, who poses a threat to the sect's existence if she exposes all their crimes. Victor suggests that Di and Edgar leave town for safety until the situation in Dublin stabilizes, but Di refuses, planning to eliminate Jamie and Cassie instead. Meanwhile, Cassie informs Rory about Jamie's recent kill, prompting Rory to verify with Victor. At that moment, Victor confirms that one of their associates has been missing for two days. Just as Victor is about to end the call with Rory, Jamie throws the severed head of the cult killer member she killed into the room where Victor is meeting with the sect members. Inside the house, Jamie calls Cassie and expresses satisfaction in causing panic within the cult. Cassie attempts to convince Jamie to hand over the cult killer case to the police, but Jamie refuses, adamant about completing her revenge. During the call, Jamie also asks Cassie to gather information about Wallace. At this point, Rory is puzzled by Cassie's willingness to heed Jamie's words, despite Jamie being Michael's murderer. Cassie explains that she empathizes with Jamie who also suffered abuse since childhood, leading her to become cruel. Upon hearing Cassie's explanation, Rory agrees to assist her in solving the cult killer case. They both then divide the tasks, with Cassie focusing on uncovering Wallace's involvement with the cult killer. As Rory delves into investigating the cult, 
Cassie gathers information on Wallace and hurries to meet Rory, but she's suddenly ambushed by two unidentified assailants, causing her to lose consciousness. Fortunately, Jamie arrives just in time to rescue her by dispatching the attackers. When Cassie wakes up, she finds herself tied up in Jamie's hideout. Jamie once again invites Cassie to collaborate in gathering evidence against the cult killers, using Wallace, who wasn't directly involved in their crimes. From the investigation, it's revealed that Wallace was coerced into aiding Victor in covering up the cult killer case to safeguard her own career. The next day, Jamie, now working with Cassie, confronts Wallace, holding her at gunpoint to extract information about the cult killers. Wallace agrees to talk under the condition that Jamie won't send her to jail. She reveals that the cult kidnaps young girls to convert them into slaves, viewing their torment as a display of power. Jamie demands evidence from Wallace to incriminate the cult killers, who then provides an address where the cult operates. Cassie promptly calls the police to apprehend Wallace as a witness to the cult's crimes. Meanwhile, Di and Edgar are attacked on the street by Jamie, but Di fights back, knocking Jamie unconscious before taking her away and leaving Edgar injured. Upon learning of Edgar's attack, Rory splits his team to handle the situation and apprehend Victor, who offers no resistance when confronted by police officers. Di takes Jamie to the cult's torture site and begins tormenting her, reveling in her suffering. However, the police find Edgar still alive despite Jamie's assault. Cassie interrogates Edgar, recording their conversation for evidence, but before she can extract crucial information, Edgar suffers a heart attack, halting the interrogation. Soon after, Cassie receives a call from Di admitting to torturing Jamie. Cassie rushes to the cult's headquarters, where Di forces Jamie to profess her love. Unable to endure further torture, Jamie bites Di's neck, killing her. Cassie arrives moments later and implores Jamie to testify against the cult killers. After divulging everything she knows, Jamie asks Cassie to end her life. Reluctantly, Cassie shoots Jamie, who had earlier expressed relief at avenging the cult killer victims. In the film's conclusion, Cassie visits Jamie's grave to seek forgiveness and pray for her. In this moment, she fondly remembers Mikkel, who considered her his own daughter and designated her as his heir. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.